Okay, so our next presenter is Valerie Ryan, and she's a fascinating woman. She has a degree uh, in Russian literature, which naturally led to getting a law degree in Sydney, Australia. So she's going to talk to us not just about traveling abroad, uh, but living abroad, and not as a student or um, uh, just a traveler, but actually someone living there. So let's give it up for Valerie. Jason, I know you know a lot about broad, so. <laughs> okay, we'll get started like it's an AA meeting. So I say, hi, my name is Valerie, and I lived overseas. And you say? Hi, Valerie. Terrific, we're off to a great start. You're a great crowd. Okay, so this is based on my experiences of living in Sydney for 10 years, um, and I eventually became a citizen. Now, you might have different opinions than I do, um, different experiences, but... This is my five minutes. You can come up here next year, okay? <laughs> so raise your hand if you've ever traveled overseas, vacationed overseas, studied overseas. Yeah, it's just about everybody in the room. Okay, now my view is you can't say that you've actually lived overseas until you've been there a certain period of time. And I think that that's a minimum, a minimum of two to five years. Now it's going to vary, you know, between people what your experience is. And the reason why I think you need two to five years is because you need to go through three very distinct stages, okay? And the first stage hits everybody is euphoria. Oh my God, I'm in London, I'm in Sydney, and oh my God, everything's so great here. There's all this food in these museums, and I just love it. I could live here forever, and it's just so fantastic, and oh my God, I just love it. And everything's here, the people and everything, it's just so great. And then it gives way. <laughs> And you get sort of annoyed, okay? It's not that you hate it there. It's just little things start getting under your skin a little bit. Um, and for everybody, it's something a little different what's going to bother you. For me, it was when the Australians would say, I had to go to hospital. And I'd be like, no, you had to go to the hospital. <laughs> Why can't you go to the hospital? And like I said, it's not a big thing. It was just a little thing that got under my skin. You know, I, I just don't know why that was a problem. Now, I could deal with driving on the other side of the car. I could deal with the other side of the road. But going through a traffic circle in the other direction was just really annoying, OK? <laughs> really annoying. So it's no surprise that I had, you know, an accident or two. <laughs> OK, this is not me. This is the only stock photo I had that I could use. <laughs> okay. It wasn't that bad. Um, now, how do we know it wasn't that bad? It wasn't that bad because... Okay, who said the, okay? All right, you're not paying attention. It's only five minutes. Please stay with me here. Okay, the other annoying thing that would happen was somebody would always bring an expat over and say, look, this is Bob. He's an American too. Like somehow we had something in common. You know, like, and I'd be like, Bob, you know, where in the States are you from? And how long have you been here? And the person who set us up was like, oh, I'm such a good connector and networker. I brought two Americans together. So stage three, you eventually got to decide what you're going to do. You're going to stay. You're going to go home. You're going to go somewhere else. And or life could make that decision for you. So if you decide to stay home, um, I've called it staying home because this place that you've ended up in has become your home. You've sort of put roots down there, and this is after, like I said, two, five years, wherever it is, um, and the place you came from starts seeming kind of foreign on itself, okay, because you've gotten kind of rooted there. Or you can go home, and when I was living in Australia, I went home to visit about once every two years, and I eventually came back after 10. But one thing was for sure, every time I came to visit, and after I came back permanently, it felt really odd. This is what I felt like, okay? <laughs> I am a stranger in a strange, strange land. I mean, it was just, it seemed so bizarre culturally to me. You have no idea how fast things change in the States over a short period of time. Like a friend took me to a cute little cafe and then I find out it's called Starbucks and it's everywhere. Why is it everywhere? It was just amazing to me how it had taken over the entire country. And then people talked differently. My sister said, don't go there, girlfriend. And I'm like, where is there? <laughs> why can't I go there? And why are you calling me girlfriend? You know, why, why are you talking funny? Now, if you came back to the States in, let's say, two years, you'd be like, what is gluten? 
why is it bad? <laughs> you know, and why is there a gluten alternative in every item in the supermarket and on restaurants? So finally, I moved back. It took me, seriously, two years before I felt like I was at home again. The way I knew is I stopped saying tomato, and I was saying tomato. Can you say tomato? Tomato. Okay, but in the end, um, you find there's no place like the place that you call home. But don't go home because there's more great Ignite presentations coming up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>